Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about skincare ingredients and products that I'm currently using to treat my melasma. So these are ingredients and products that can help with melasma and hyperpigmentation. All right, so we know that there are specific products that you use in your skincare routine. There are your cleansers, there are your serums and your moisturizers, but I don't think sometimes people realize there are specific ingredients you wanna look for when you are trying to target things like melasma and hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation is when you have this overproduction of melanin in your skin. So I'm not talking about your overall skin tone, I'm talking about when you get these dark marks on your skin that stand out from the rest of your skin tone. A lot of the time, hyperpigmentation is the leftover, I guess, trauma or inflammation that you get in your skin. So you hear me talk about inflammation all the time and how we want to avoid it. So I tell you guys things like, don't tug on your skin, don't irritate your skin, and even something more specific like, don't pick your pimples. And the reason for that is because that inflammation, that redness that you get in your skin, when it goes away, it sometimes leaves behind the hyperpigmentation. And those are those dark marks on your skin. So red marks on your skin are something called erythema, but the dark marks on your skin, like the brownish tones, the purplish tones, those are all hyperpigmentation. So while I also get hyperpigmentation, say like after I have a pimple, I'll always have erythema first where it's red, and then it starts to turn into hyperpigmentation after that. So it starts off red, turns into hyperpigmentation. So I have that type of hyperpigmentation, but my big biggest skin issue is that I deal with something called melasma. And melasma is a form of hyperpigmentation, but it's a little bit more tricky to deal with because a lot of what triggers your melasma, it's definitely a lot of like, you know, exposure to UV rays, for instance, so you have to wear your sunscreen. But there are other things like internal things that can cause your melasma as well, especially hormones. And a real sign of melasma and what makes it different from your typical type of hyperpigmentation is that it's blotchy. So you get it more in like splotches. So they call it the mask of pregnancy because some women can get like this look and that's kind of what I deal with. So a lot of people don't even realize sometimes that I'm dealing with melasma. It covers my cheeks completely. I have makeup on right now, so you can't really see it. But when you watch some of my videos where I don't have makeup on, where I'm showing my skincare routine, you'll see if you look really closely, you'll see that there's kind of like a transition color from like my under eye area to my cheeks. It almost looks like I'm wearing bronzer on my face and that is melasma. So let's talk about some of the ingredients you should specifically look for when you are trying to treat hyperpigmentation and melasma. One of the first ingredients that I think people just need in their skincare routine in general is retinoids. So retinoids are really important. You guys hear me talk about them all the time. This can be anything from your retinol, which you can find over the counter. You can get it in the drugstore. You can get it at Sephora or Ulta. There are so many different brands that sell different retinol products. So retinol is pretty easy to find. You can go all the way up to prescription retinoids. So this is like your tretinoin and that tends to be stronger and has the most studies behind it to prove that it works. Retinoids are the gold standard when it comes to anti-aging and when it comes to skin cell turnover because tretinoin specifically, the prescription retinoid is proven to do the things that it claims to do. So that is the skin cell turnover, stimulate collagen production, and do all the things that you want it to do. It's giving you that fresh new skin. The reason why this is so important is because hyperpigmentation kind of lives in the different layers of your skin. You have to think about your skin as different layers of skin. It's not just like this one layer of skin that you have for the rest of your life. It's constantly shedding itself and bringing new skin up to the surface. So hyperpigmentation tends to be skin that's damaged all the way down deep into the layers. That's what makes it so hard to deal with is you can't just get rid of that top layer of skin and suddenly it's gone. The way you should really think of it is it's this trauma that's been kind of caused to the different layers of your skin. So you have to shed those skin layers to finally get to skin that doesn't have hyperpigmentation on it. So that can take months, it can take years, you know, it just can take a very long time. And sometimes it just won't go away. If you are like me and you deal with melasma, there's a chance that you're never going to completely get rid of it. It's more like you're dealing with it as best as you can. So retinoids are really important because they truly help with that skin cell turnover. So getting rid of those different layers of your skin so that you can eventually get to the skin that looks nice and new and baby soft. 
So another type of ingredient you should be looking for, and this tends to be more of like a big category of ingredients, and that is your AHAs, your alpha hydroxy acids. These are chemical exfoliants, and they can vary in different strengths. Just like your retinoids, there are different strengths of the AHAs, and that's because AHAs, like glycolic acid, can have really small molecular structure, and what that means is that it can penetrate your skin really deeply. So the reason why I like AHAs specifically for hyperpigmentation is because they really slough off that top layer of of your skin. So again, you want that skin cell turnover. But they are also very hydrating for the skin, which also helps your skin just look nicer when you are dealing with hyperpigmentation and melasma. You just want that smooth, glowing look, and that's what AHAs do. But then you have to consider which AHA is best for you or which combination of AHAs are best for you. The most popular are glycolic acid and lactic acid, in my opinion. Glycolic acid because it's the strongest of the AHAs, and that's because it has a smaller molecular structure, so it penetrates your skin a little bit deeper, so you're gonna see more results with it and quicker results, but that can also lead to more irritation for your skin. And that's why one of my favorites is really lactic acid. Lactic acid is one of my favorite ingredients. It's fermented, so it's giving you a little bit more of that brightening effect to your skin. It is exfoliating for your skin. I tend to find, because it's more hydrating for your skin as well, that it's just a little bit more gentle. It has a little bit of a larger molecular structure than glycolic acid, so it's not gonna penetrate as deeply, but it's still pretty strong, and you can get it at higher percentages too. If you are new to lactic acid, make sure you're starting off kind of low with any of the acids actually. Make sure you are starting off lower so that you're not irritating your skin because if you irritate your skin, then you get into a whole different set of problems with your skin. So you want to start slowly. I love lactic acid. I feel like my skin just always looks so glowy and dewy after I use it. And it's just, it's one of my favorite of the AHAs. If you can't tolerate glycolic acid or lactic acid, you can even look for mandelic acid. All right, so those were ingredients that you tend to find in your skincare routine in general, just because they really help with a number of different issues. But now let's talk about ingredients that specifically can help your hyperpigmentation and your melasma. One of those ingredients is tranexamic acid. And tranexamic acid is actually a little bit newer to me in my skincare routine. I had known about it for a while, but I really didn't think I needed it in my life. And I feel like it's becoming more and more of a popular ingredient because I think we're starting to realize that people do Deal with hyperpigmentation and we want lots of different ways to tackle it and tranexamic acid is great because it specifically targets your hyperpigmentation but it's also really gentle for your skin so you can use it with any of these other ingredients that i'm talking about as just another way to target your melasma or your hyperpigmentation it specifically is a tyrosinase inhibitor and what that means is that it stops the enzyme tyrosinase that causes that overproduction of the melanin in your skin that color in your skin and again not talking about your overall color. It's not gonna change the color of your skin. It's just preventing that excess melanin or that excess color that you get that causes or that turns into the hyperpigmentation. Another thing that's really interesting about tranexamic acid is that it's starting to become popular among dermatologists to prescribe it to their melasma patients as a actual oral prescription, as a drug that you're taking, a medication that you're taking. So this is something that I'm starting to consider in talking to dermatologists that are my friends, whether they're online or my actual dermatologists. They're all really Split on whether they want to prescribe it to their patients. And the reason for that is because it wasn't originally used for melasma, not for vanity reasons, you know? It's used for other ailments. So this is a little bit newer where people, where doctors are starting to prescribe it for melasma specifically. It's something that I'm definitely considering and I'm probably going to get on it eventually, but I wanted to start with more of the topical treatments first and also with, you know, like treatments and procedures at my doctor's office before I actually commit to taking a medication medication. So one of the next ingredients that specifically targets your hyperpigmentation is alpha arbutin. And this one is really interesting because like your tranexamic acid, it goes well in your skincare routine. Like you can use it in the morning, you can use it at night, you can use it with your retinoids, you can use it with your, you know, your AHAs, you can use it with your tranexamic acid. So it's just a really great ingredient to add into your skincare routine. And it's also just really powerful. So it is a derivative of hydroquinone. And hydroquinone is probably the most studied, the most proven ingredient to actually get rid of your hyperpigmentation and to prevent it. 
but it can have a lot of issues. It's harder to, to use. It's not as user friendly. And that's because you actually have to have periods of time where you stop using hydroquinone. You can't just consistently use it for years and years and years. And it can also be sensitizing to the skin. So alpha arbutin is kind of like the gentle version of hydroquinone. It's not as strong as hydroquinone, but you're gonna get very similar benefits over the long term. And you can also just continue to use it in your skincare routine. So alpha arbutin is a, a very interesting ingredient to me. It's one that I use daily because I love the effect that it has on my skin. And I love pairing it up with ingredients like tranexamic acid because together they just work even harder to help me you know tone down that melasma okay the next ingredient is azelaic acid you guys know i am obsessed with azelaic acid this is a little bit newer of an obsession actually all of these ingredients that i'm talking about besides the retinoids and the ahas are ingredients that are a little bit newer in my life and when i say newer i mean like over the past couple of years i've really started to understand how i incorporate them into my skincare routine and what they specifically help me with and azelaic acid is one of those ingredients ingredients. Azelaic acid is also a tyrosinase inhibitor, so it's very similar to your tranexamic acid and your uh, alpha arbutin. It does have that effect where it stops that overproduction of color, the melanin in your skin, so you're not getting as bad of hyperpigmentation. But I feel like this is not scientific. This is not me looking up anything. This is not me talking to doctors or anything. This is just personal experience. So this is anecdotal. Keep that in mind. That doesn't mean that it's true, I guess. This is just from my personal experience and what I have noticed about it. So something to keep in mind is I don't consider azelaic acid to be my go-to tyrosinase inhibitor. Those are my ingredients like the alpha arbutin and the tranexamic acid. I rely on my azelaic acid more so because it is anti-inflammatory. So it really helps to soothe that redness that you see in your skin. So if you get breakouts, if you get, you know, just any kind of sensitivity, on your skin when you are exfoliating or using any kind of products or have any kind of treatments um, done to your skin, you get that redness to your skin. And that redness, think about a pimple, that redness turns into the hyperpigmentation. So if you can help calm that redness before it really gets out of hand with ingredients like azelaic acid that are anti-inflammatory, then what I find is my hyperpigmentation isn't as bad, I guess. So you're kind of like preventing the hyperpigmentation by stopping the redness that will eventually turn into the hyperpigmentation if that makes sense. The other thing I find with azelaic acid is that it's a very gentle way to unclog your pores. So if you deal with whiteheads and blackheads and you're like really obsessed with exfoliating your skin, but you know that it, you sometimes take it too far, azelaic acid is one of those ingredients that you can add into your skincare routine daily. I have gotten myself to the point where I use it morning and night in my skincare routine and I have zero issues with it. It is just another one of those ingredients that I add in daily. And I find that my skin is is just beautiful. It's like porcelain. I have way less clogged pores. My blackheads don't stand out. I hardly ever get whiteheads anymore on my skin. So it's just one of these ingredients that I find to be just multifunctional. It does so much for your skin. It's really, really beneficial. Another ingredient that I have recently added to my skincare routine, which is actually the newest probably ingredient I have added is um, an ingredient called cysteamine. And it is specifically in a product called Suspera. I specifically saw all the black dermatologists and the dermatologists that specialize in treating people of color. I saw them start to talk about Suspera. I know that dermatologists look for different ingredients that can replace hydroquinone in a skincare routine. Again, because hydroquinone, kind, it kind of comes with its own set of issues and it also is just, it's not as user-friendly because you do have to be under the care of a doctor when you are using it. So I think that uh, Sustamine is really interesting because all of the doctors kind of hopped on board with it. And I think that's really important to take note of is that dermatologists who deal with patients that have melanin in their skin are really excited about this ingredient. And for me, that was really important because I am half Asian and I am half Hispanic. So I have lighter skin, but I tend to have a lot of hyperpigmentation and melasma because of the undertones in my skin. That said, it is a newer ingredient in my skincare routine. I have been using it for about a month and a half, two months now. I have seen a difference, but I've been doing a few different things in my skincare routine, including different treatments. So it's really hard for me to say that this specifically is the ingredient that is doing it. I am using 
lots of different ingredients at once. And I can say that my melasma is definitely getting better. But since we are talking about hydroquinone, I should really highlight this as the go-to OG ingredient when it comes to treating your hyperpigmentation and melasma. Hydroquinone really is an ingredient that if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation and melasma that you cannot get rid of and you're using like all of these different types of ingredients already and you've just tried everything, you're gonna go to your dermatologist and they're probably gonna bring up hydroquinone to you if it is as like the last resort. And that's because it's just proven to work. Hydroquinone right now is available at lower percentages over the counter, meaning that you can find brands that you can just purchase it from without getting a prescription from, from your doctor, but that is actually coming to an end. I haven't really looked too much into it, but I know that the FDA is kind of coming down on hydroquinone as an over-the-counter ingredient. That doesn't mean that you can't get it from your doctor. That's probably the best way to get it is through a prescription. The other way that you can get it, and that's probably the most recent way that I have actually added hydroquinone into my, into my life, not into really my skincare routine, is that I got a Cosmolon peel recently and it was compounded with hydroquinone in it. So it was a high percentage of hydroquinone and it was just one time. So you can also get it in different ways like that to treat your melasma. It's not just like a one size fits all. And I really do encourage you to have a conversation with your dermatologist about it if you are considering using it. Even if you do get one of these over the counter products, you should definitely make sure that you are telling your dermatologist that you are on it and get on a game plan with it. So those are some of the main ingredients that I look for to treat my melasma and hyperpigmentation. There are other ingredients that are gentler that you will find, you know, like formulated with some of these ingredients that I just mentioned. And those ingredients are, you know, like your vitamin C, for instance, and that includes the derivatives. You know, I'm obsessed with vitamin C. It's an amazing antioxidant for your skin too. It helps to boost the efficacy of your sunscreen. So it's really protecting your skin, which is also very important when you deal with melasma. There are ingredients like licorice root. Again, that is anti-inflammatory. So I I almost put it into the same bucket as, you know, like my azelaic acid, because it is helping to soothe that redness in the skin, you're also then not getting as much melasma and hyperpigmentation. Fermented ingredients, you, we've seen like the rise of the ingredients uh, that we see like in the Korean essences, for instance, that really help to gently exfoliate the skin and then brighten the skin. Niacinamide, you guys hear me talk about that all the time. It's one of my favorite ingredients. And one of the benefits of it is that it also helps to brighten your skin and help with hyperpigmentation and melasma, you know, and then probably the most important ingredient or ingredients to look for in your skincare routine or to add into your skincare routine is your sunscreen filters. So you want sunscreen in your life. If you have skin and if you have a face and if you go outside, you want to wear sunscreen, but if you have melasma and hyperpigmentation, then you absolutely have to become religious about your sunscreen because your melasma and your hyperpigmentation will only get worse if you have UV exposure. So you wanna do everything that you can to protect your skin. It's the most important thing. None of these ingredients matter if you don't have your sunscreen. So now let's get into the products. I wanna show you how these ingredients can be used essentially in these products. What you'll find is a lot of these ingredients can be formulated together. So you don't need to find you know, several different products that have these ingredients. You can, and there are lots of brands out there, including my own brand, where we focus on specific ingredients. But what you'll find is a lot of these products are well-rounded. So even though it might focus on an ingredient, you'll turn around and look at the ingredient list and you'll see that there are several different ingredients and some of them are the ones that I've talked about where they're all together working as kind of like a little team to help fight your melasma. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my prescription retinoid first, and that is from Apostrophe. You'll see that this is a compound of tretinoin. It's at a really low percentage at 0.025%. That's because I can't really tolerate tretinoin. The minute I try to like get really brave with it, my skin just goes crazy. It just goes to show that skincare is really, really personal. Skin is very, very personal. I can use retinol, over-the-counter retinol, no problem, and I can use it daily. But when it comes to prescription retinoids, when it comes to tretinoin, I have to go really low with it. And I can only use this about twice a week. I'm trying to get myself to three times a week, but every time I try to bump it up, I just become a complete mess with my skin, meaning that it's just sensitive and it's red and it's flaky and stuff like that. This also has an ingredient called spironolactone in here. That doesn't really have anything to to do with hyperpigmentation and melasma. That's actually an ingredient that I'm really excited about. It used to be available only as an oral prescription, but what it does is it targets hormonal acne. And the reason why this is a big deal for me is because I only really break out now from hormones. So when it's like that time of the month, uh, you can get hormonal acne 
any time of the month, just depending on what's going on inside your, your body. But for me specifically, I get acne right before I'm about to have my period. So I like having a little bit of spironolactone in a topical product because it'll just help to keep my breakouts down. And that just means less hyperpigmentation to have to deal with because I get hyperpigmentation after I have a pimple. Even if I didn't pick my pimple, I still get some type of hyperpigmentation and it looks like I've got a pimple for like weeks and weeks and weeks. So if I can have an ingredient that just keeps the hormonal acne away, then that's even better for me when it comes to hyperpigmentation. But something really interesting is you'll see it also has tranexamic acid in it. So this is 5% tranexamic acid. And I actually have separate products that I use that have tranexamic acid, but that's really cool to me. I just said that I only use this about twice a week. So the other products make sense to have in my skincare routine on days when I'm not using this. So on days when I'm using this, it knocks out a bunch of different products from my skincare routine. But again, you can get retinoids over the counter, specifically as retinol. So this is my brand Naturium. This is our retinol complex serum. We have other ingredients in here like Bacuchiol and also hydrating ingredients in this as well. This is an encapsulated retinol, so it really keeps the retinol stable, but it also helps to make it a little bit more of a gentle experience. So it's releasing over time and it just makes it a very nice experience. So if you're newer to retinol and retinoids in general, then this might be a good way to introduce retinol into your life. All right, so let's talk about the AHA. So like glycolic acid and lactic acid, because these are really amazing exfoliating ingredients. First with glycolic acid, again, this is from my brand. We have a couple of glycolic acid products. This is one of the stronger products that we have. This is our glycolic acid resurfacing gel 10%. 10% is very strong. If you are new to glycolic acid, this is not the product that I would have you start on. This is the product for people who are pros when it comes to glycolic acid and you wanna see the biggest difference, that's when you're gonna go with something like this. You use it essentially as a serum and I would use it on days when you're not using a retinoid. Again, if you are a pro and you know your skin and you know what it can handle, you can actually use this on nights when you're using your retinoids, but you just gotta be really, really careful. This is strong. We made sure to have also different fruit acids in here. So those are essentially AHAs as well. And we also have hydrating ingredients in here. So this is gonna be really hydrating for your skin, but also very exfoliating for your skin. This product by Kate Somerville is one of my newer favorite products from the brand, and that's because it's their resurfacing overnight peel. This is an incredible product for people who are like, I don't want to think too much about all the ingredients I'm using and all the different products that I need to have in my skincare routine. This is kind of a one and done product. It has glycolic acid in it. It has retinol in it. It even has niacinamide in it, and it even has licorice root in it. So there are lots of different ingredients in here that are targeting your melasma and a whole host of other issues for your skin. So this is a really great product. I love the way it feels. It, the retinol is encapsulated with ceramides. It just makes it a more gentle experience on your skin. So while all those ingredients might sound a little intimidating to use in one product, I find that this product is just really nice on your skin and you do definitely see a difference pretty quickly. Like over the next couple of weeks, you start to see your skin looking pretty, pretty fresh and new. When it comes to lactic acid, I really love this Biosense Squalane plus lactic acid resurfacing night serum. This feels kind of like a milky type of serum that you put onto your skin. It's um, not so strong that you feel like a tingle or anything like that. It just feels like you're getting this smooth, steady exfoliation on a regular basis. So I like to wear this right before I put on my moisturizer as like the last serum step of my routine when I am using it. I haven't really used it lately because I have other products that have kind of like replaced it, but I did want to give it a shout because I know that people wonder about this product and I think it's a really nice way to get lactic acid into your skincare routine. Another Kate Somerville product that is kind of like the OG for me when it comes to exfoliating is this Kate Somerville Exfolicate. This uses different fruit enzymes to exfoliate your skin, but it mainly uses lactic acid as one of the main ingredients to exfoliate your skin. And it really, I mean, you see a difference in your skin the minute you use it. It also has a physical exfoliation as well. If you have melasma and hyperpigmentation, just be very aware that you don't want to overdo it with your skin because if you're causing irritation, you're then causing melasma 
and hyperpigmentation, it can trigger all of that. So just be very careful when you're using any of these exfoliating types of products. But this is one of the originals for me and one of the first products that I really started to love lactic acid in. Another product that I obviously love because it's from my brand, this is from Naturium. This is Tranexamic Topical Acid 5%. So 5% Tranexamic Acid is a clinically effective percentage of Tranexamic Acid. So you'll really see a big difference in your hyperpigmentation and your melasma. You obviously saw that I have 5% tranexamic acid in my prescription, but again, I only use this twice a week. So on the days that I'm not using that prescription, I am using this in my skincare routine. It goes really well with all of your other skincare ingredients. It doesn't cause any irritation for my skin, and I can use it actually morning and night. It's a really, really light serum. It almost feels like it's an essence, so it's just very hydrating for the skin. And again, going back to those well-rounded formulations, you'll see there are other ingredients that I talked about just now. So there's tranexamic acid, there is kojic acid in here, which is also another one of those ingredients that I should have mentioned earlier, niacinamide, and then licorice root as well in this one product. Another product that you guys have heard me talk about is by Topicals. This is Faded. It almost feels like it's a cream, so I find that I don't use it as often as my other products, and that's just a personal preference because I'm more of, of a serum type person. I like having the different layers of serums that are very light on my skin. This, on the other hand, is a little bit thicker. It's like a gel cream consistency, which is also really nice, but I'm a person who's very heavy handed when I am pumping out my products or scooping out my products. So I tend to find that when I overdo it with this, if I put just too much in my hand, it can feel a little bit thick on my face. So I don't use it as often as I'd like to, but I know that people are obsessed with this and that's probably because it has some great ingredients in it for hyperpigmentation. It has kojic acid in it. It has tranexamic acid in it. It has melatonin in it, which is another ingredient, again, one of those like gentle ingredients that people are starting to talk about for the treatment of hyperpigmentation. It also has niacinamide in it and it has licorice root in it and it has azelaic acid in it. So this is kind of like a, a bomb of like all those ingredients that really treat your hyperpigmentation. Speaking of azelaic acid, I'm really proud of this product from my brand Naturium. This is our azelaic acid emulsion 10%. Again, there are other ingredients in here. We actually have a complex that has ingredients that are really great for brightening your skin, but then there's also niacinamide in here. So we have a few different ingredients in here that help to target melasma and hyperpigmentation, but we specifically focus on azelaic acid in here. This is pure azelaic acid. It's at 10%, meaning that it is the highest percentage of azelaic acid that you can get over the counter. You can get much higher percentages of azelaic acid as a prescription. But for me, I, I feel like the 10% is perfect. I use this every single day morning and night in my skincare routine. It is so nice and light. It feels almost like a really light lotion on your skin. So I use it as the last step of my serums and then I apply my moisturizer on top of it. Another thing that I actually forgot to mention about azelaic acid is that it is pregnancy and breastfeeding safe. So retinoids, you have to be a little bit careful with, you know, even alpha arbutin and tranexamic acid, it's kind of like split between the dermatologists about whether you can use those ingredients while you're pregnant and breastfeeding. Also with your AHA, Lactic acid is totally fine. Glycolic acid, if you use it at a really high percentage, like 10%, is usually a no-no in pregnancy as well. So it gets really, really tricky when you are pregnant. Azelaic acid is one of those ingredients that you can use during pregnancy and breastfeeding. So it's also just great for everybody, even people with sensitive skin. As far as alpha arbutin goes, I actually don't find it in too many different products. So I'm really excited that in my brand Naturium, we have two products that have alpha arbutin. This is our alpha arbutin and serum 2%. 2% is the highest percentage that you can get of alpha arbutin over the counter. So we put that in here, but again, we added other ingredients. So there is niacinamide in here, and then there's also hyaluronic acid to give you that plumping and hydration to your skin. And then of course, you guys heard me talk about Suspera. This has cystamine in it. Cystamine is actually really difficult to find in other products. I think that from what I have heard, there are products and there are conversations brewing about getting cystamine into other types of products. But really the best way that you can get it right now is this product, Suspera. The problem that I have with Suspera is that it is very expensive. This is close to $200 and you have to use it for like three months 
consistently every single morning. So it is definitely not an accessible product. You have to also get it from a med spa or from your dermatologist. It's not something that you can just order. You might be able to find some online stores that sell it, but really this is not as accessible of a product. The one thing I will say though, considering how expensive it is, what I find is you don't need a lot. I only put it on the areas where I have my melasma. So mostly in like that midsection of my face and you only need a light layer of it. So you really only need like a pump and then you are good to go. So this tube has lasted me for over a month already and I feel like it's gonna get me through those three months that I have to use it consistently. A couple of shout outs of products that I have added into my skincare routine recently. This is EV Technology Daily UV Face Mousse. This is uh, SPF 30. This stuff is so interesting to me and I'm not even trying to like get you guys on board with it yet because it almost seems like too good to be true. This is a Swedish product. They use European filters in this. So they're not approved here in the United States as UV filters, but in Europe where they have really high standards, this is considered sunscreen. And what's really interesting about it, first off, it's this like interesting mousse texture. But what I like is that it penetrates that top layer of your skin and it will last for a much longer time than your typical sunscreen. So it feels really nice on the skin. It gives you kind of like a dewiness to your skin. It can feel a little bit tacky, but I put makeup on over it anyway, and it doesn't bother me. It's safe for all skin types, even sensitive skin and even children. So this is just a really cool sunscreen and it's supposed to last up to like six to eight hours. They do recommend that you reapply still every two hours, but for people who are a little bit iffy about their reapplication, this might be something to consider. Another brand that I want to kind of highlight is called HelioCare. I don't know why people don't talk about HelioCare more because this is something that I had been aware of, but I thought maybe it was like gimmicky. And then I started talking to dermatologists, specifically to my friend, Dr. Nina Desai, who is a board certified dermatologist here in Los Angeles. She was like, why don't you start taking HelioCare? She actually worked on some of the studies of the main ingredient, which is, I'm probably gonna butcher it. It's like polypodium leucotomos. That is the ingredient that you get in HelioCare. What it does is it gives you a little bit more UV protection to your skin, but it's more from the inside out, which is very, interesting. It doesn't mean that you don't have to wear sunscreen, but if you're like me and you have melasma or if you're somebody who has something like lupus or autoimmune diseases that can really make your skin sensitive to the sun, this is a really interesting ingredient and, and product to add into your life as a supplement because you're just getting that added protection. So it's like UV protection from the inside out and then you obviously have your sunscreen that you put on top of your skin and also any of the other products like hats and stuff that you're using to protect your skin. You're just getting one more form of defense, I guess, for UV protection. The other thing I wanna point out is if you are dealing with melasma specifically, it's really important to pay attention to your triggers because everyone is really different. We don't even really know what causes melasma. We know that it has something to do with hormones. We know that the sun can definitely make it worse, but there are also other reasons. And we're starting to find that it, it has a lot to do with inflammation. So there are definitely foods that can cause inflammation if you get overheated. I know on a really hot day here in LA, it just immediately makes me think like, oh gosh, my melasma is just going to flare. Like over the next few days, I'm just gonna have such bad melasma. Before the pandemic, I actually started to reconsider going to like hot yoga classes, cycling classes that can get really, really hot inside. Those types of classes can really trigger my melasma specifically. So it's really important to be aware of these things. For some people, it's the things that they're eating, really spicy foods, for instance, can really trigger their melasma too. So it's just, it's important for you to figure out what it is that makes your melasma worse. So those are my go-to melasma fighting ingredients and products. There are lots of other things that you can do to treat your melasma, but this is specifically what I am using in my own skincare routine. Again, skincare, I always want to point out that skincare is really personal. Just a few years ago, I didn't need this many ingredients in my skincare routine to treat my melasma. It wasn't as bad after my first pregnancy, but now it's worse. And so I use lots of ingredients together to really work as a team to fight my melasma. But just a few years ago, I would have maybe only needed two or three of these products and I would have been totally fine. So this is also stuff that, you know, you have to keep in mind. You have to remember that your skincare routine is personal and what you need to treat your skin is very, very personal to you. If you guys have any questions, obviously you can ask me in the comments below. I always wanna know what you guys are doing to treat your melasma and if there's anything new that you guys see out there too, because 
obviously. It can help me, it can help other people. You can find me on Instagram, I'm at Susan Yara, and I'll talk to you guys soon, bye.